Yeah. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, everybody. When's that? I gotta know when to put some music in or something. Fifty-six minutes, pretty much. Fifty-six minutes. Mental note. Mental yeah. note. I won't remember that. <laughs> I'll write it down. I actually uh, remember how we were talking about uh, an, an episode title for the last episode. Yep. Um, I came up with one. Yeah. That was uh, that was pretty great. Obviously, now it's fucking gonna take me forever to find it, mm-hmm. but. Um, this is great radio. Yeah, this is, this is, this is what the people like. Yeah. This is especially because this will be in the past. Uh, the episode for the last catch-up episode is, we do it and we love it. We are not ashamed. <laughs> That's good. What were we talking about? Uh, when we were doubling down on any weird thing an audience member oh, yes. does. Yep. <laughs> we oh, good, we yeah. also do it. <laughs> yeah, and we do. And we love it. <laughs> we're not ashamed. Yep. All right. So... Now that we've we've beaten the Bobbitt. And, and I think I feel like tensions have cooled down a little <laughs> we bit. We took a lo- this break we had probably a little break. bit longer than you would imagine <laughs> that it was. <laughs> it yeah. was not a simple pee break. We uh no, we everybody had, had to, to go to separate rooms. We all had to reconnect. I know. had to go play with my dog for a minute to remember <laughs> that I like things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I wanna start with this though. Alright, all right, come I, on. I, I, so can I can, maybe this is what you're gonna start with, but No, go ahead. Um can we get general impressions of Stranger oh, yeah. Things? We should actually probably start with that before I do my other thing. All right, Stranger um, Things. So I I really like Stranger Things, and the the number one reason I really like it is I love the performances of all of the actors in it. I, I, I could probably find some examples of people that I'm like, eh. But I like all of those actors. I really especially like Finn Wolfhard and uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, that's Eleven and... Mike, those two are awesome. And then, yeah. uh, I can't think of the actor's name, please, Hopper, but I, he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I think the funny part is that I, when I had heard about it coming out initially, it's like, oh, Winona Ryder is back. Mm-hmm. And then Winona Ryder is like, good, but she doesn't stand out in the same way that a lot of other people do. So I just, for me, it's awesome acting, and I think the way I described it before is it's a world that I want to keep going back to because I just enjoy being there when I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. Curtis, how do you feel about Stranger Things? All that shit I was talking about, people that like the Babadook on the hype train, those basic bitches, I was that basic bitch with Stranger <laughs> Things. <laughs> that show came out and I fucking loved it. And then before season two came out, I, I was like, oh, I gotta watch that again to just, you know, uh, remind myself. And then I was, this is not as good as I remembered it being. And then I thought the second season was just not really great either. So I think it's okay. I think I think it's. I would have no beef with anybody that wanted to watch it, but I don't think that it. Uh, I don't think it's great. I don't yeah. think it's changing anything. Yeah. Ben? Uh, and I hate Stranger Things, <laughs> and I think it's actively degrading to our culture. So we we go we'll <laughs> anyway through the spectrum yeah. on this. <laughs> okay, I'd Trevor. like to start. Yeah, Please start us off. All right, here. so I get, apparently I'm the, the one that likes it the most. I would odd. say so. Okay, so. Uh, Here's what I think is the problem with Stranger Things. I want to start there, Mm -hmm. because that, I think, is actually... What you said, Kurt, is exactly what I think is the problem, which is that this show had the viral fandom problem that it did not need. It is not, and I want to be clear, I don't think this is, like, a transcendently great show. I think it has... We're going to see some of these actors later become really majorly successful, and some of them, I think, are already really good actors, like... The two I mentioned, Millie Bobby Brown and Finn Wolfhard. Regardless of your feelings about the movie It, the new one, Finn Wolfhard is incredible in that as Richie. Like, and he's playing a very different character from the one he plays in Stranger Things, which tells me enough about him as a actor to feel like he's going to be okay, and I'm going to get to enjoy watching him and other stuff. The problem with Stranger Things is that it came out and all of a sudden it blew up, and everybody was like, "This is the greatest thing ever! You all need to watch it immediately. This is fantastic." And then the best example of this is the What About Barb online mm-hmm. problem, which my sister and I have talked over and over about how much we hate these people. Mm-hmm. And my sister's argument for it was that everybody's like pissed that Barb dies. Spoiler alert, I guess. And then, <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this to figure yeah, out whether seriously. or not you should watch Stranger Things. Honestly. Like, plus, you're... For, quite frankly, you shouldn't care because Barb is like not even a tertiary character. Yeah, I like Barb. <laughs> <laughs> I really related to Barb. All right, great. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Barb <laughs> dies, and like everybody is pissed off because, and I cannot think of the girl that plays the uh, the main, the older Mike's older sister, Nancy. Nancy, yeah. thank you. So, and everybody's like, Nancy should have been there for Barb. This is bullshit. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And uh, my sister was like, why are we slut-shaming Nancy? Mm-hmm. Just because she tried to get with uh, Steve, mm-hmm. who actually turns out to be, and he's 
another actor I would throw in there that I think is fucking awesome in this show. It turns out to be not a douchebag, but actually a good guy. And, like, that whole concept... We're gonna talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about it. That's fine. We're gonna talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But, uh, the idea that, like, the fandom got so militantly defensive over Barb. You wanna know why? It's because everybody on the internet relates to Barb. Yeah. Because the internet is a bunch of barbs, basically. That's, that's, <laughs> like, that's fine. Of... They shouldn't be. <laughs> like, and I fewer. F- here's what I'll say: fewer people should be like Barb. Barb is not a role model. No, Barb is a doormat. And bar- and Barb's not to be like. I don't have disgust for Barb as a character. I would have. It would have been nice if she wasn't, you know, removed from the show to see her have a character arc and change in some way. Be- but like. It's she's also not someone to become totally like upset over, as like the loss of her is like the loss of the soul of the show, which is what people were literally saying. Which yeah. I was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking. I about. think a lot of them were saying that ironically because the internet gonna, is a place where you'd be surprised. Because to go back to comic cons, people <laughs> that cosplay as Barb <laughs> that <laughs> carry the signs and are like pissed if anybody says anything that's not pro Barb. <laughs> those are real people, and I tell you, I got into verbal arguments with many of them. I think uh, in 2017, <laughs> we don't always know what irony means anymore. That's true. Yeah, well, well totally you, true. You see someone saying something ironically, and then to be part of their group, you say it genuinely. Yeah. Right? That's, that's <laughs> so, what's going on with it. So Nazis that's what right I think now. the problems are. Is I think the fandom and the way that it blew up is the mi- biggest problem with it. Because I don't think this is a great show. I think it's a very good show with performances I really love. Mm-hmm. And... I, like I said, I want to keep going back and seeing more of this stuff in this world. And on top of that, I thought season two was much better. And I thought it was much better because I actually, and this is going to, you know, no one's going to agree with me by the end of this podcast. Because I, this the episode that everybody got up in arms about, which is, again, spoilers before I go on, when Eleven goes off and meets up with the other girl from her program that she was in yep. and they go through what I have equated to the if Luke Skywalker got trained by Darth Vader <laughs> where basically like this girl's like you have to harness anger and rage to do the things that you need to do mm-hmm. and Eleven has to make a decision about whether she accepts or rejects that and kind of does both I found that to be a really fascinating episode I loved Millie Bobby Brown doing the like I'm gonna go to the the bad bitch look mm-hmm. like all of those things and the fact that Everybody said, oh, this is just a cynical attempt to do an expansion Stranger Things universe. And I'm like, I don't think that that's actually what it is. I choose to believe it that way. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I actually think that this was an attempt to generate the idea of, like, there is another character and there is a bigger world because eventually if they're going to do another season and a season after that, which right now they've said they're going to do four seasons is their plan. Okay. (sighs) No. If they're gonna do, <laughs> but if they're gonna do that, they do have to get outside Hawkins at some point. They can't keep going back to Hawkins because that's the the worst part about the se- second season was that like it felt like everybody was just like, yeah, we're back and things are totally normal despite all that really weird shit that happened the previous year. You know, bad things happen in small towns, right? Yeah, it's yeah. and it's like that was the most sort of like breaking aspect of it for me. I, I think that it does a good job of the growing up like adolescence metaphor really well i relate a lot to those kids and their experiences i feel the same way about, like and not just one of those characters a lot of those characters to me i'm like oh that, that's my experience as that kid and that's my experience as that kid and that part of it i think makes me really like watching it and i don't disagree with people who say like it's really just appealing to people because of nostalgia and my response is so what that's totally fine it's okay to be nostalgic about things and, and remember things that you also experienced. It, it is... See, see, I disagree. It is, <laughs> it is okay to feel nostalgic, but I think that once your most popular media starts to appeal solely to nostalgia, you've got a problem. Because yeah. you, can't, you can't build culture out of the bones of what culture used to be. Right. Uh, that's, and that's what Stranger Things is trying to do. It's trying to. Take, I don't completely agree. It's it's there's there's not an ounce of originality in Stranger Things. It's we, not it's not saying anything new. It's not saying anything compelling. But I don't or, mean, or think or that not having an moment. ounce of originality means that it's all nostalgia either. There's nothing wrong with retreading archetypal storytelling and foundational storytelling and doing it well or doing it moderately differently than it's been done before. There's a reason those things work. How does Stranger Things uh, access the archetypes? Because I'm interested in archetypes as well. Well, the archetypes, I'm not referring necessarily to, like, classic Jungian or, um... Oh my god, I blanked on his name. Freudian? No. The actual writer guy. Oh, uh, the the hero with... Campbell. Joseph Campbell. Yeah. I'm not referring necessarily to those, but more, like, 
modernized trope archetypes of like characters from films that this is harking back to and things like that and then toying with those sorts of archetypes steve was the example of like the the guy that seems like an asshole and then is not necessarily what you think he is he's the rogue kind of right yeah yeah the rogue right and he's then Han solo yeah and that kind of idea that stuff i think that they those are well done and that that's okay to enjoy that kind of thing and i look at it from that point of view not necessarily like and I know you've said this before, Ben, the idea that, like, it's saying the 80s were so great because everything had its place, which was really, like, the 50s when everybody had their place, a.k.a. get in the fucking kitchen and make a sandwich woman. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that it's trying to say that necessarily. It might not mean that it isn't also saying those things inadvertently or unintentionally or it's making people harken back to and choose to like it for those reasons. But I don't have as much of a problem with it for those same things. Otherwise... We can't do any kind of nostalgic or throwback stuff because there's so many issues around so many things the further you go back. I think we need to be a lot more careful about nostalgia than we are. Sure. Yeah. I think with the word nostalgia... Stranger, I mean, Stranger Things uh, wields nostalgia uh, frivolously, I would say. Mm-hmm. I think it becomes important because you have to... People don't ask themselves enough. We'll use Stranger Things as an example, but I'm sure other things do it. Mm-hmm. Do I like Stranger Things, or do I like Stranger Things because I like Ghostbusters? And I think that that is the problem. When you start just piling on these tropes and calls to other things, you like it because you're reminded of something you like. Not because it's actual quality, Mm -hmm. which I don't necessarily... That's not why I like Stranger Things, but that's the problem when you try to have a show that invokes so much nostalgia, is that you don't know if you really like it or if you just like what it makes you feel. I mean, I, what, is, what is the difference between really liking something and liking what it makes you feel? I think because the difference, it might, I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, it might not make much difference, but if you, it's important to understand the distinction between a well-told story with lovable characters or just people selling you something you already like and you defending and loving this thing that's not that good it just you don't realize that you just love star wars like i think that that's why it's important it it really it probably doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things which way you like something because like whatever you like it's on netflix go watch it a million times it's not gonna hurt (laughs) if you want like (laughs) i I will be curious because uh there's a show called dark that came out on Mm -hmm. netflix which is a i've been i've been told it's like the german stranger things it's young adult true detective. Yeah, so I, I'm going to watch that because I'm curious to see what when I if you get comparative with the two, how I feel about them after that because that may be a better version of a Stranger Things kind of concept. Well, but I mean, Dark is actually about time travel back to the '80s, which is a weird thing. Also, yeah. I mean, also it, the idea of a German show about time travel very is weird. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> feels like there's one thing they I should think be doing. Maybe you should have gone a little earlier. Maybe the, 80s, <laughs> maybe the 80s isn't exactly. Yeah. This is like know. the real, real key point in history. Like, maybe maybe, maybe the show does address that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They could maybe. Well, we can't go back that far. The <laughs> France flux away. I also I don't. I don't yeah. know. Is is German identity that rooted in that? Like, when I think about Germans, I think about World War II, because that's the only fucking context I ever fucking think about Germany. Mm-hmm. I don't, maybe for them that... They, oh, no, they are, yeah, I lived in I Germany for a few months. They, they remember. Yeah. yeah. They're, <laughs> they're forced to remember. They're very conscious yeah. about remembering. That you have to take multiple courses on, like, what the Nazis did and what the regime did they, and, and all those things in the, in the country. Like, they are, they took the opposite approach to it that Japan did with what uh, happened in in World War Two, which is Japan essentially denies all of it having happened or having done anything untoward, and the Germans are like shoving it in the faces of every generation. Yeah, both of which have their problems. That's I mean, interesting. Yeah. Yes. So, anyway. great segue on Nazis. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. the Duffer Brothers are Nazis. Yes. <laughs> happy. I'm happy saying it. Just gotta get this off my chest. Yeah. Uh, you know what I love about Stranger Things? You know what I love about it? Mm-hmm. It's bringing the synth wave genre into people's <laughs> lives in ways that it would never, you know, never been. I didn't even realize synth wave was a a, fray, a term until mm. Stranger Things blew yep. up like it did. I had always just said like that sounds like John Carpenter music, like that. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. that '80s techno. The stuff. music is great. They they really. I think yeah. the music is great. 
and I think the soundtrack is great for that. It's series. an interesting thing. It just, yeah, it's just like, shut up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to the nostalgia thing, I guess one of the questions I would ask is, so you don't want to have a callback to every single like reference point just to try to make somebody go, oh, that's my childhood, right? Um, and it's similar to like every Marvel movie has to have like six or seventeen, you know, Easter eggs, you know, there yep. because you have to have those. How do you make the, set the film in the '80s and not also have them dress as the Ghostbusters because that's the film that they saw that year or something like that? Like, to what degree can you can you set it in a time period and not also have it be referential to the time period? Right, and and plus too, a, a big thing to also consider into thinking about Stranger Things like that, the you know uh, fads and media and pop culture is cyclical and yeah. we're in a, a super 80s like resurgence right now like synth wave is coming back and yeah. there are a lot of a lot of pop music that's coming out this year has a very 80s sound to it it's just yeah. recycling you know the the last decade is getting kind of a tired and then yeah they bring back elements of new metal will be coming soon it, 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 new it, metal's already back in my heart <laughs> and in 10 years we're gonna be listening to more fucking bands that are i i go f- like grunge is whatever grunge is fine but like we'll be listening to fucking bands that were inspired by Godsmack and we'll be wearing yeah. flannel shirts again and mm-hmm. corn will probably still be around and still <laughs> corn will be going you on tour you can't kill corn yeah. they'll be headlining <laughs> no, a festival John- Jonathan Davis still has stuff to say yeah right? he does he's always got something to say yeah I fucking love the corn he's, he's got, got piles guys. of journals to draw from <laughs> <laughs> I love corn. I, <laughs> I do too. Yeah, they're, so, they're so good. I'm out, of, I'm out of that one. I don't want to make it sound like I'm making fun of corn because I do. Love corn. I do not love corn. I will make fun of Jonathan Davis though. <laughs> Jonathan Davis seems like a funny dude. Yeah, I think he'd probably be cool with it. Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He seems like every interview I've ever seen with him, it's like I think he's in on the joke. Yeah, you know? yeah. and the joke is him. Like, yeah, he's yeah, fine he with that. Is. Yeah. Uh, speaking of this, though, I, would you, can I share a quote from V with you guys? Yes. All right, because this was this was something that I this was something that I read and I thought, boom, that's Stranger Things. Okay. Um, this is a a dentist named Eigenvalue is uh, talking about his client named Stencil. His client Stencil is obsessed with this global conspiracy that he's thought up. Right. Uh, perhaps history this century. Uh, this is a book written in the '60s, set in the '50s. All right. Perhaps history this century, thought Eigenvalue, is rippled with gathers in its fabric such that if we are situated, as stencil seem to be, at the bottom of a fold, it's impossible to determine warp, woof, or pattern anywhere else. By virtue, however, of existing in one gather, it is assumed there are others compartmented off into sinuous cycles, each of which had come to assume greater importance than the weave itself and destroy any continuity." Thus it is that we are charmed by the funny-looking automobiles of the 30s, the curious fashions of the 20s, the peculiar moral habits of our grandparents. We produce and attend musical comedies about them, and are conned into a false memory, a phony nostalgia about what they were. We are accordingly lost to any sense of continuous tradition. Perhaps if we lived on a crest, things would be different. We could at least see. And I think that sums up Stranger Things pretty well, all right? Because Stranger Things is a musical comedy about the peculiar moral habits of the people of the 80s, all right? It's about the emergence of Stranger Danger, mm-hmm. right? About the emergence of this culture in which you can't, you can no longer, there was a sense at least that you could no longer trust the people around you. Mm-hmm. The Cold War had been around for some 20, yep. 30 years, right? Heavy in people's minds. And, well, well that's Hawkins Energy, right? That's the Department yeah. of Energy yep. thing, is you... This this building that just happens to be in Hawkins, no one really knows what it does. Right. No one What's knows it, doing it before. There? Yeah, no <laughs> one's ever noticed it. It's just in the middle of the fucking woods. Yeah, uh, and man, and and the 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 adults, you never know which adults to trust in Stranger Things. Which actually, I think, is one of the best parts of season two. Really, because Aston's character, I kept waiting for him to be revealed as some sort of villain, some creep, and he's actually just exactly what he appears to be. Bob, and that's, right? Yeah, and the it's Barb awesome. of Season two, yeah, but he, but he has actual layers. Thank uh-huh. God. Yeah. Like, he's... Yeah, he's great. And the same thing with, um... I can't think of his name, but the guy playing the doctor figure in season two who replaces mm. the father character mm. from season one. You're just waiting for that guy to be an asshole. He's also not. Like, he actually genuinely is... Like, they... The, 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 that's another one of the things that I like. So, to use, like, the equivalent of music, and this is how I was explaining it to my friend Wes before. In music, like, Linkin Park puts out their first album, and then they put out their second album, and it's basically the same fucking album. 
It's literally the same thing, regardless of how you feel about Linkin Park, if you like them or not. Um, and so if Stranger Things just went and retreaded exactly the same thing, that would be accepted by a lot of people, but I would be pissed. Mm -hmm. And they basically went back and pseudo retreaded and then tweaked a couple of things, and I was enjoying the tweaking. That that little changes, those little subtleties, those little plays on it, are the things that I found enjoyable about it. Like, oh, you know, Bob actually is exactly this guy. Oh, mm -hmm. the Doctor isn't actually villainous. Oh, they're still going to make references to Hopper's relationship to his child from the previous season, but it's you're going to see how he's inept as a father with Eleven because he really doesn't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, like, all of those things are super enjoyable to watch. And then the rest of it, there's flaws all over the place. But it's still... Like, they're at least trying to do something different. They're not just going back and doing the same thing again. They're not just reprinting the same stuff. Right. And people will get pissed at bands when they go and do something new and different and be like, I want more of the same thing. And you guys talked about this with Nintendo. Nintendo wants... Every f Nintendo fan wants the same thing. Yeah. But in reality, Nintendo's like, no, you don't. You want this new cool thing that we're going to yeah. try. And Nintendo has a ridiculous track record of succeeding. Most people don't succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think that the thing that gives me hope for the Stranger Things future to be continually at least interesting enough to make me go back and watch it more is that they're going to keep trying at least some differences. They're going to try to change a few things. They're going to try to make it you know, compelling and see what works with characters. Like, having Steve become Dustin's, like, mentor in second season. And, like, He's going to teach him how to spray paint. Yeah, yeah. this older brother, this older brother, like... Yo, it's S-L-U-T. Yeah, come on, man. Th but this older brother figure who's, like, kind of also figuring himself out while he's trying to help this other kid figure stuff yeah. out and realizing that he doesn't have to be, like... I, it, the second season is largely Steve not ha realizing he doesn't have a fucking clue who he is mm -hmm. as a person. And it's apparent from the opening scene when Nancy's like, he's like, what's wrong with my essay? And she's kind of like, and just sort of cringes. Yeah. And doesn't want to tell him because you want to hurt his feelings. And he, but he knows he just gets it. He's like, yeah, I, I don't know who I am huh. and I haven't known who I am. And Dustin is, he's more like Dustin than maybe it seems. And the fact that the two of them are put in that position is one of the best things they did in the second season. Mm -hmm. And it, largely isn't because anything they're doing is original, because none of it is. But it's because those two actors just do it. Like, they play those roles extremely well. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, again, that's the thing that I always come back to. These actors are good. I'm convinced that, that the majority of the people in this show that are given the time to be on screen are doing a good job. See, I don't like the kid actors in this one. You don't like the kid actors? I don't. And, and I don't... It, maybe it's not the kid oh. actors themselves. I'm sure they're, they're, they're perfectly fine actors. But I think Did you that... also not like the kid actors in It? I liked the kid actors in it a lot more. In fact, I liked Finn Wolfhard a lot more in it than mm -hmm. I did in Stranger Things. He's he was he was one of the ones I didn't think got to. There wasn't much to him this season. He kind of had the Jon Snow. I'm just moping around all year mm -hmm. without a lot of de character development thing going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he was not, especially after seeing it and being like he could do all this stuff. Give yeah, him some yeah. of this stuff to do. Well, he has he has a certain manic energy. Yeah, that uh, that people really like, and I bet a lot of people are gonna take advantage of that manic energy. Gotta hope so, because holy such. shit! Every, I would just watch a compilation of Richie's lines from it. <laughs> Jesus, that's a he, he was, he's, he's so was, funny. He was pretty good in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I think that the other kid performances in Stranger Things are lackluster. Mm -hmm. I think the best one is Millie Bobby Brown, but yeah. that she is hamstrung by having a non entity to play. She is yeah. just a force. Yeah. That's all she has going for her. She's yeah. she's a big old doe-eyed force. Yeah, and it, it, they're trying to layer that. I mean, it's tough because like, so if she if that character grows up in that environment and doesn't actually have much of a background to her, I mean that's why the other figure from that same institution is more interesting because she's been out longer mm. and has an identity in this like pseudo punk group that she belongs to, and I that's why I couldn't get why people hated that episode so much because I'm like this is like. Well, it's because yeah. there are two things people love about Stranger Things, and this is, I, I don't have any direct evidence for this, but I read a lot, <laughs> I read a lot of criticism about it, yeah. and, uh, and, and everything that people love is the 80s references yeah. and hanging out with the characters. Yeah. That's the two things that you see coming up right. over and over again. So if you have an episode where you might, maybe you still have 80s references in that episode, I don't know, I didn't watch season I mean, three. if you know, like, 80s punk subtleties, <clears throat> there's subtle references to 80s punk, uh -huh. like... Like, uh, culture. Yeah, like... Which the, I like, loved. The, like, but... hardcore street punk yeah, scene. Totally. Yeah, totally. Um, but 
it, you you take the character element away, and yeah. suddenly anyone who just wants to... It's the same thing with Game of Thrones, actually, yeah. where people just have the characters that they like to look at, right. and if that character doesn't get enough time in a given episode, then that, a person, bad, that yeah. person isn't going to like the episode. It's not about the story, it's about the individual Well, that's, that's the weird thing about me, too. Like, I think I mentioned... I know I mentioned it to you before, Ben, but, like, I... Didn't I stopped watching Walking Dead at like season four or something? But my favorite season is the one that everybody hates. I love season two mm-hmm. because instead of it constantly being the formulaic, let's go to this place. Oh shit, everything got fucked up. Now we got to go to another place. They stayed in one spot for a long time, and it allowed the characters to develop. Now some of those actors were bad, but like giving John Bernthal time to slowly go crazy <laughs> is a great decision because mm-hmm. he's a fucking amazing actor. And so like that degree of. I like weird episodes that try to do something that almost goes against what we consider the through line of a series. Mm -hmm. And that was how that episode, the Dark Eleven episode, felt. Like, you're going to do something a little different here. So, But it makes sense to me that that's why people didn't like it. Did I've never watched The Walking Dead. Um, In season two with John Bernthal's character, Mm -hmm. so did did he kind of lose his sanity over the course of that season? It starts in the first season because... Did you ever read the graphics? No. So, like, Shane, his character, and Rick, uh, they think... Rick obviously wakes up in the hospital. That's the, like, iconic opening scene, which is a great opening scene where he's... It was good in 28 Days Later. Yes, it was. (laughs) Boom! (laughs) It was better in 28 Days Later. You gotta edit some air horns in there. (laughs) But, uh, so, that, like, he comes back to find out that uh, everybody thinks, assumes he's dead, and then when he, he finds his family, it's like... His wife's banged Shane on, the, you know, on the side in yep. like that. What you would expect of somebody who's been like lost everything in grief and comfort and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, now that he's back, she wants to go back to the world that she knew before, and Shane can't can't get over that because it leaves him isolated and alone. And Bernathal does this awesome job of like portraying that slow loss of sense of self without her. Like if he doesn't have her, he has no identity in a world that's gone to hell. And because season two, they're on a farm the whole time, he's just left to ponder it and ponder it and ponder it over and over and over. And she's constantly trying to, like, repair their relationship to the degree that they can all work together because how else are you going to make it? And it doesn't work out. And, like, that's the thing. That was why I was watching that season. It was fucking fascinating. It's fascinating to watch somebody who's a genuinely good actor do subtle things like that. See, and the reason... I ask that is because the things that make that good are good acting, mm-hmm. subtlety, mm-hmm. and a slow change over a period of seasons. Yes. Stranger Things tried to do all of that in one episode. <laughs> yep. And that's why people don't like that episode. Yep. They, I don't know if they... It's hard to tell where they started with it. Did they do some character design and say, we want her to look like this because it looks really cool. How can we get there? Or did they say, we have a big doe-eyed blank slate, Mm -hmm. and we want to make it a character. Right. What should we do? And I think that they were, to be, well, I'll have her go hang out in fucking Manhattan for a day, (laughs) and then she'll be developed. Like, and I think that, I think that kid is a great actor, and I think that if they had done it over the course of a season, which honestly, I don't really know why they couldn't have, because... No, they should have. I 100% agree they should have. The whole season was Mike and Eleven being isolated and wanting to get back together, and I think the strongest part of the whole season was the emotional response when they finally. No, if you're going to knock Stranger Things for anything, it's their inability to develop characters slowly with subtlety. And I think that's that's why that episode gets such an amount right. of hate because it's just they just shoved you through that idea to make it make if sense. If she left as fast the cabin by like the second episode or third episode, and that like, and they had crammed more of the scenes of her and Hopper, and honestly, if they just done a bottle episode of her and Hopper. <laughs> as the second episode of the whole mm. season, I think that would have paced out much better. Yeah. And especially because, like, that's one of the character development episodes, too, is her and Hopper together actually helps you understand him and her much better. And, again, it's also the two of them are really, really good. I don't... This is the, my biggest problem with season two. I don't give a shit about the mom stuff. What the hell was that? Why do, why do I, I... Like, uh, I get that, like, she was taken away from her mom. Okay, great. But, like, am I supposed to infer from that that she, her mom, also had some kind of weird pseudo-ability? Wait, and this is Eleven's mom? This is Eleven's yeah. mom. So, in season one, they talk about that, and that's actually something that I take some issue with. Uh, Eleven's mom was a part of MK Ultra. 
which okay. I don't know if you guys are. Yeah, yeah, MK. Mortal Kombat? Yeah. No, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new one. It's her mom was month. part of MK Annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, her, yeah, her mom was a test subject in MK Ultra in the early 70s, and then Eleven was, bo- well, she uh, allegedly miscarried, and then right. they actually, right. the uh, agents actually. That whole arc was bad. Well, I, I, fun, I, I think it's immoral to use MK Ultra in that way, <laughs> because MK Ultra was like a real thing. Yeah, like, it's pretty, uh, it's one of those things that like you can reference it, because people don't know enough about it yeah. to be like, they're like, oh, I heard of that. That's the government testing thing. Yeah. But they don't know, like, how real it was. Yeah, they don't know yeah. that it's actually, like, the source of all our interrogation techniques now. Yeah. All pretty much came from MK Ultra. It's like, yeah. turns out if you isolate someone and hurl abuse at them, they'll tell you anything. Yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. it's like people referencing, like, well, their parents were victims of the Holocaust. It's like, ah, yeah. you should probably do something less lazy than that that's a little mm. more respectful of what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. No, I that was the part that griped me the most is, like, I, like I don't think that to to fix the blank slate problem doesn't require her to go back and meet her mom. Yeah, it just it it's, that's lazy cliche writing. It's lazy cliche writing, yeah. and also you're already fixing that problem with Hopper anyway. Like mm-hmm. the dynamic between her and him is so much more compelling because yeah, and the story is much more interesting if her mom's gone already. If there isn't like I thought she was going to show up at house and the mother was not going to be there anymore. Mm. Like yeah. that she wouldn't be able to meet. I with think her. that would have been better because I think that. It would have been, I think it would have been told the story in a much better way if the, if there had been no answers there yeah. and Eleven had to face the reality that there are no answers. Those, those I was ripped away from that. Yes. I can't look for that and find anything. I have to find something somewhere else to find my identity. Yeah. I think that would have been much better writing. My other, I'm going to, I learned today, uh, Ben, that you hate food analogies. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> Jake's an intermediary between... No, 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 no. That was not a food analogy. Jake was telling me about how different Star Wars has made him poop. And yeah. like, but also, yeah, it was yeah, a That's, that's the analogy. result of food. I, it's not a food I, analogy. I told him, I was like, Jake, to be honest, that was a pretty bad analogy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I think I'm going to make a food analogy here. Okay. And as an example of why this season was was unsuccessful, in my opinion... I get, unsuccessful is the wrong word because it was definitely successful. <laughs> People liked Unsatisfying. It. People liked it. If I'm a pile of mashed potatoes on a plate, <laughs> Stranger Things is the gravy. It's just a big boat that just gets fucking poured and you get covered in it and you just have to... That's how they deliver see, like Stranger Things to you as a medium. Mm. You just sit in front of your computer and it just fucking... Pours thick hot Stranger Things gravy all over it your body. It just pours it, thick hot Stranger Things over you. This analogy is so bad. So you lost, you lost me. No, guys. no. Here it is. Here it is. So when season two starts and you see number eight and yeah. you realize that she's eight and there's eleven, you're saying there's other stuff on this plate. It's yeah. not just gravy yeah. getting dumped all over me. I'm fucking loving this. This is the best worst analogy ever. <laughs> So it was exciting to think, oh my god, like they can really develop this yeah. world. There are at least ten other, <laughs> at least 10 other, other kids characters. Or that, food items. Or yeah. not even kids because green beans? Eight <laughs> stuffing. Eight is like Turkey? an old teenager, or maybe yeah. even in her twenties. Yeah. Right. And from a very different social background as she's a black punk rocker from yeah. the, that lives in I don't know is it Manhattan or fucking Chicago or whatever. But it's it's some big city that isn't fucking small town USA. Yeah. And then the problem is that they made me say, oh my god, there's other stuff on this plate. It's not all fucking gravy. And then they dump more gravy on you. And then it's not that good. The other stuff is <laughs> nothing like, it makes you look out and then it's really nothing worth looking for. Yeah. And you're just like, god, I wish they were just pouring more gravy over me. This is I, See, I think that the, I, I agree with the analogy up until the last part, which is I think that they should have just doubled down on this expansion. And just yeah. giving you more of eight. And no, that's death. what I think. I think yeah. that if it were done better, yeah, because I hadn't even. I was so wrapped up in the events of the first season, I never once thought about the fact that there were ten other yeah. kids that got experimented on. Right. So that idea was like, oh wow, that's a that's a really good place yeah. to take this. And then it was just unsatisfying because it was one of them crammed in the one episode. My hope is that they're not just going to. That they're going to bring eight back, and there's going to be an extension outside of Hawkins, because that's really what has to happen for the show to get it, to to level up to a way that it becomes more compelling than what it is now. If they don't do that, and 
8 was just this like MacGuffin to come in and teach 11 you harness your anger kind of thing yeah. then that's a giant pile of bullshit <laughs> and that sucks cuz that's there that's like that's like missing the opportunity to do something interesting because you're afraid to step outside of the comfort zone you've created for your audience. Yeah. Like, this show will be better if they just decide, fuck the audience that loves this because it's all nostalgia stuff, and they try to do something more I, dynamic. I do think they did a great job of incorporating Max into the friend group. I love Max. And so I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy because I think that they, are, they won't be afraid to introduce new characters. Yeah. I just hope they do it as well as Max. I love Max, and I loved... I, I can never remember the black kid's... Lucas. Lucas, like, that dynamic with Dustin, that whole, like, first time you're in middle school and you actually notice that you like girls. A little love triangle yeah. they got going like, on that was two. that was really, really well done. And also just, like, she's awesome. Like, that yeah. actress was phenomenally cool. And she works really well as a, like, for the audience, as, like, having stepped into this. Like, how do you guys not think all this shit's really weird? Like, yeah. and why won't you tell me this stuff? And then he tells it to her and she's like, that's not true. Like... You know, <laughs> are you are you? Did, I know you haven't seen season two. Are you familiar with Max and or how she was introduced? I've read a lot about season two. I, I don't know that I'm familiar with how she was introduced. They 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 go to an arcade because it's the '80s. Oh, it's and they, the first episode. Yeah, yeah and they Max, right? yeah they yeah, realize yeah. that a, a Max has beaten their high score. Yeah. I think it's cool. And then the character <laughs> yeah. Max is a girl. Right. right. I, I think that that's a cool way to. Well, because the first season was criticized for not having enough young women in it, so they and had to stuff. That's what I was just. There. You know what? I'm a though. cynic. Say you can be cynical what, about that. They still did a good job stuffed, of fixing yeah. that. Stuffed criticism. in or not, God forbid, a click of friends has more than one girl in it. Right. You know, like Which I, is I actually hope something they three. argue about. Yeah. Like yeah. they actually have this debate because they do the analogy of the D and D party, right? And that Eleven was the wizard and all that stuff. And then like Max can't become part of it one because Mike doesn't want there to be another person who reminds him in any way of Eleven, mm -hmm. which is a pretty normal response, I'd say. But then also because uh, they have all their arbitrary rules for how their friend group is supposed to work, and they want her as a friend, but they don't totally know how to go about doing it. Yeah. And, like, it's handled very well. Like, they actually make it... It makes sense. Like, you don't feel like they're shoehorning her in. Mm -hmm. um, and... I don't know. I, that Max character was great too. Yeah. Her brother's a different story. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I, I still don't know how I feel about that character, but I fucking hate that guy. That like, guy's yeah. a fucking piece of shit. And yeah. uh, speaking of pieces of shit, oh boy, Steve, Steve, the show oh, does, the boy. show does not earn his turnaround in the first no. season. They, I think that some of the things that Steve did in the first season. Can't be undone can't by be undone, yeah. him being nice to some kids. Yeah. I think that, I mean, off the top of my head, you know, breaking that kid's expensive camera, Jonathan. not yeah. because, I, honestly, not because he did something inappropriate, because he was encroaching on the girl that right. he liked. He did yeah. it to be tough. Spray painting the word slut on the marquee. Yeah. That's a bigger deal for me than the camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. is... That is the big thing. I like, think the problem with the way Steve is given his turnaround is that they had to try to make him so convincingly the your 80s movie asshole mm -hmm. that they went way too far with it. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, but no, he's really a nice guy. And it's like, that doesn't totally work. I still got super hyped when he shows up with a bat and like kind of mm -hmm. is the yeah. is the guy that comes to save the day. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree completely. He doesn't they don't earn his turnaround at all. I think and I think that is another example of lazy writing in that show. They they did exactly that. They went too far on the eighties bad guy and they yeah. said, How do we fix this? Let's make him be really nice yeah. and then let's double down on those eighties tropes with Max's brother yeah. to make it seem like this guy's the fucking dick. Like right. he's way worse than Steve. Well I think Steve is actually like very redeemable. Like, the version of Steve in Season 2 is way better than the version of Steve in Season 1. Right. Astronomically so. And it and a lot of it is because he's more... He, he's presented as vulnerable. Um, and because, like, he actually, like, makes much more sense as a character. Yeah. I just don't think it was paced well enough. I still... Yeah. I found myself thinking, this guy's kind of a dick. Why am I being shown that right. he's this nice guy? Why am I feeling bad for him when Nancy... And if they'd done a better job say, in the first you. season of, like, portraying him as much more in the middle, yeah. instead of like, oh, he's total shithead and now he's a total good guy, if there was something more, then yeah. that would probably... You would probably not feel weird about sympathizing right. with him in the second season. Billy, 
<laughs> is a fuckstick. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy didn't need to be in the show. Yeah. I, I, I went back and forth on this because I heard people say that and I was like, ah, I, I thought that it was kind of interesting. And then they arbitrarily squeeze in the whole thing like, oh, his dad's physically abusive. That's why he's the way that he is. I thought what we were going to get from Billy when he keeps saying, like, you're the reason we had to move before to Max, was that they were, he secretly, they were living just the two of them. There were no parents in the picture whatsoever, and he had essentially been moving them from town to town to avoid getting taken by DHS or something like that, and and that he was, a, like, they, he, they enrolled in school because he knows they have to do certain things to stay under the radar. I thought that was what was going to happen, and I thought that would have been much more interesting, and then the dad shows up, and I'm like, this, this is lazy. Yeah. This is extremely lazy, and also, this character sucks. Especially, like, double down racism like it's yeah. pretty it's pretty like it's, yeah it's just so bad in that mm-hmm. season where it's like there's no way you could I mean, i'm sure they'll fucking spin him around all of a sudden next season too but <laughs> well the they, theory is actually that he's gonna be the big bad of the next season that like the presence of of whatever it is in the upside down is going to like essentially feed on his like evilness because he's such a shitbag yeah Yeah, they're gonna buffy it yeah which i mean that's fine i guess i the one thing i do like about we haven't even talked about like the upside down and that whole like thing idea um i do like that there's a lot of ambiguity about what the fuck this thing actually is like they haven't really spelled out for you what it is it's pseudo lovecraftian that's about it it's silent hill also yeah and silent hill and i actually think that the less we know about it the better off we are. I don't want to know anything. Yeah, I think for me, I have all the answers that I need. It's Dark World. It's the yeah. the dark yeah. mirror version of the one that we live in. And that's, that's all you need to know. You don't need anything else. And I, I'm afraid we're going to You gonna access keep, it through a giant wall vagina. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep going back and forth to it and learning more about it. And I don't want to. I just yeah. want to... It's a place where bad things come from. But answers, I, Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> the audience craves answers. Yeah, that's the... That's the my biggest fear, other than them just deciding that they have to triple down on nostalgia because season two wasn't as successful in terms of viral popularity as the first one. Well, I mean, here's what I want to do. Uh, Duffer Brothers, listen. I know you guys are listening. I know you guys are listening, Brothers Duffer. I know you the Brothers Duffer. You guys love video games. You guys love all the same things that Kurt and I like. You've been listeners since episode one. So, hire me, Okay. And where I want to take the show is next season, we go back ten more years to the 70s, and it's Dukes of Hazard. All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right? Are you listening, guys? Are you listening? Are you listening? To How fucking rad would this be? It's a young Chief Hopper and his best friend, just two good old boys, never meant no harm. All right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's do a quick, real quick, gender flip. Okay. Hopper, Winona Ryder as the best friend. Hopper and Winona Ryder. They've yep. known each other for years. Yep. Yep. There we go. And they're, they're riding they'll, around. They'll score a lot of points with the gender switch, too. They're riding around in the fucking General Sherman or whatever. <laughs> and just having a good old time in, in, Hawken, in the Hawkins, Indiana of 1972 through 1973. Maybe it's the summer between, so you get some good, like, nostalgic vibes off that. But listen, I'm just saying, consider it, okay? Get back to me. You guys know how to reach me. You know what I think, uh, I think is the biggest problem that Stranger Things faces? Yeah, I think it has nothing to do with the brothers Duffer. I think the problem is Netflix. <coughs> mm-hmm. I think that the it's a season of a show. Yeah. It's that's how shows come out or had come out up until you know they still call them seasons, and the, they're two years apart. Netflix has so much going on that it'll take you know between each season of Daredevil or Stranger Things, it takes two years to get there. And the reason they do that, I would think, maybe, is so that when Stranger Things Season 2 is coming out, you have to re-watch the first season to get more streams mm-hmm. and you just get more people watching your show. And then also the fact that Netflix has like 7,000 shows going at once. Yeah. They have to go about two years in between each season to be able to manage all of it. And I think that that is detrimental. I, I don't think you can keep people's hype that mm-hmm. long for a couple you get them, you can get most of them interested right. again and then watch the first season again but every time you have to watch another season and it's been two more years yeah. that is a diminished return on I didn't huge rewatch the first scale. season I just watched the second season yeah. I don't I mean and that's I feel like they might 
they might make them go even quicker with Stranger Things because of the age of the actors too. Like they need to yeah. worry about that. That's a factor that you don't have They're, to worry yeah, about. Yeah, Stranger Daredevil. Things was only a year and a half. I think. Yeah, they right? went quicker, if, if not, which I last, think is a big problem for. The it was Duffer summer Rose. of last year. Yeah, and well, they they were talking about this. In, in they the have to work a lot faster because they can't. They don't want to they, face out those kids. They work faster, and they are uh, the the time jumps are happening in the show as well. Right. So the distance between seasons is, is the, the distance same distance in the writing. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's a clever way to handle that part, mm-hmm. but it also creates a lot of pressure and a, and a real time crunch to do anything yeah. original. Which is the, again, that's where the fear comes in, and that's why. We need to keep going backwards, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Stranger Things Season 4, Hawkins, Indiana, 1928. <laughs> Fucking, it's the Dust Bowl, all right? Aren't we it's trying the... to make this not like it? It's, <laughs> a, it's the Dust Bowl story that we all crave. It, Hawkins, Indiana is a natural gateway to the Upside Down. That's why the government facility is there. And all these poor farmers, these sharecroppers, are having to face down the ultimate evil. Keep the kids, though. I think the kids... I think that... Listen, I'm not going to mind if we keep those same kids. I understand people love the kids. We just want to watch those characters. Maybe it's one of those, like... I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something that does this, but like literally Tremors Four. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually just this Tremors is, Four. This is the plot to Tremors but Four. There, there's actually uh, a book was released that was Children of Lovecraft. Yeah, that is a series of short stories written by fans of Lovecraft, and one of them was the first one was actually um, basically like Grapes of Wrath, mm-hmm. Lovecraft edition. Yep, and it was fucking incredible. Okay, good. Stranger so Things. Do that. Hire the person that wrote that yeah. to write Stranger Things Season 4 in 1928. Dust and Bowl, then in you I'm just sold. take the same at, you take fucking Hopper give him an old twirly western yeah, mustache. Yeah, yeah. give him an old mustache yeah. and a fucking yeah. six shooter instead of a fucking Put a little bit of twang in that opening <laughs> credit. All the way back to the old west. Yeah. yeah, and that's all that's watch Tremors 4 and hire Ben and I think you got a real <laughs> yeah. strong Next four seasons, we're gonna be like fine. You're like fifty percent of the way there, Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. We know you're listening. We <laughs> want you to be successful. Yeah, we know you've been struggling lately compared to this podcast. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> compare the amount of low budget like stand up specials you've put up on in the past year. I know times are a little bit hard, Netflix. <laughs> you made a lot of promises. You can't cash in on all of them. <laughs> Netflix, you're about six months from my mass exodus, all right? People are going to start canceling. Price just went up. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Two two or three bucks a month? I'm canceling it. Hey, Mindhunter was good, though. Nice job on that one. What? Uh, Yes, you were were talking about that. Mindhunter was good. I just watched the first episode of that the other night. Did you like it? It was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you did you see Zodiac, the Fincher movie? No. So, like, this is basically him taking Zodiac and making a TV series out of it. Mm -hmm. It's great. If you like dialogue, Mm -hmm. Mindhunter is, like porn mm-hmm. for dialogue it's great so 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 it's like long stretches of just sex and then dialogue like spurts of dialogue yes, happening. precisely it's like, yeah. it's like porn it's, for dialogue yeah porn dialogue. it's like uh the the other side of the coin of a tarantino film dialogue <laughs> and then instead of violence you have the porn part. right yeah. yeah okay yeah all right i feel like anybody could get behind that okay we're gonna oh now we're gonna do revisit tarantino and bring fincher <laughs> into it <laughs> Uh, I have a quick tangential thing mm-hmm. that was related to the fandom thing. The, the comparison that I thought of when I was thinking, like, um, people getting too hyped about Stranger Things, so that that sort of ruined what it was, which was a decent show that has some great stuff in it. I uh, compare it to, a, did either of you play Undertale? No. Yep. Okay. Undertale's good. It is. Undertale is not... And I say this because if I don't say this, my sister will find me and kill me because she adores this game more than anything else. I haven't finished it yet because I hate the bullet hell stuff. I just want the story. I think the story is really good. And I like the characters and the writing is funny. But, like, it is... And she would agree with me on the fandom thing. The fandom ruined what was a pretty good game. It's the same thing that happened with Homestuck. Yeah, like, sometimes people get too, like, militant about their fandom and that turns everybody else off and it turns everything into a toxic environment around a game or a film or a show. And I think that that's the closest comparison, despite it being a different medium mm-hmm. of what's going on with Stranger Things. You have all these people that love, you know, Undertale, but are doing things with it in the fandom that are making people who haven't played it feel like they can't. Well, you, you take any, any new piece of media, culture, or art that starts to get popular with a subgroup of people Mm -hmm. they're going to start incorporating that into their group identity yeah and when you incorporate something into your group identity the the risk that you run is that you're going to exclude and alienate people who don't want to be part of that you're going to compartmentalize your group and the walls will become 
almost literal for anybody outside of it that they can't yeah. get in. Yeah, I, I found mean, I found Undertale's fandom extremely alienating because yeah. they didn't like the same parts of it that I liked. Yeah, you know they they had memified certain parts of it to be like the reason you like Undertale is because of this funny skeleton. Yeah, it's because of the, because of the music. And it's because of I don't know one right. one or two other things right. I can't I can't it's been a while since I played it but like the, when you when you memeify something like that you you pick one or two things that are the images and sounds that signify and the this anger work. that was directed at people who played it quote unquote the wrong way mm-hmm. and like were missing the point and like it's like you know what that that that's there's never a reason to bring that up mm-hmm. especially and, in any game I think there's yeah. never a reason to tell somebody you're playing this game the wrong way yeah you know like. You can certainly say to somebody, to use the New Vegas example, don't try to walk through the Death Claw Enclave. Mm-hmm. Go this way instead. You might have a better time. Yeah. But that's not to say that someone is playing it the wrong way if they if they try something and fail. Yeah. I mean, and that I think is like you know, if you say somebody likes something, you're an idiot for liking X. Mm-hmm. No, you're an idiot for saying that a person is an idiot <laughs> yeah. for what they like. Yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, trying to get into things like that it can be tough especially i think there can be helpful advice like if you want to use new vegas as an example say if you couldn't get into it or whatever i think you could tell somebody not that you're playing it wrong but why, why don't you try don't worry about the story think of what try, uh, yeah think of a cool role play build mm-hmm. a character that you think would be interesting yeah. in, a, in a desert wasteland yeah and then pl- pr- just pretend you're that character yeah, when you get bored to that yeah. yeah when you get bored do a main quest when you Get to a new area, throw the main quest aside, and pretend to be that character in that town for the first time. Mm. But I think it it's 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 a strange part of I I want to say nerd culture, but essentially just pop culture now because yeah. there's no such thing as nerd there's culture. No it's anymore. a strange part of fandom because regard- yeah. like the same thing happens in sports. Like I coach soccer and ice hockey. I like soccer quite a bit, particularly like the English Premier League. But there's, like, both of those are sports where anyone who's new to that sport, who's starting to get interested in it, has a very tough road to being accepted by the quote-unquote real fans of that There's thing. a high barrier to entry. Yeah, and yeah. that and that is always upsetting, because you're losing out on the potential for people that, like, will become passionate about something that you're already passionate about. And it's like, you've lost the ability to reflect back on the time when you weren't as invested in that thing. Yeah. You know, people love to feel superior to others. That too, I'm guilty of it too. But I think that we, we all, like the three of us, have different interests in different things that cross over in various ways. But I don't know that any of us wants to bar the other from liking something that they like. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunately, very, that's uncommon. Yeah. I think it's very difficult to make the argument that, like, no, you shouldn't like that. Yeah, that's a hard argument to make. It's tough because I, I. I the, the toughest thing for me to approach it is when something that you like becomes very popular. Mm-hmm. And it's not taking it from you, but it can feel... Ve- I, you, I, I could feel defensive, you know, with superhero movies. They don't make them for me anymore. Yeah. They they started to make them for me. They, they said, you're going to need... We're going to do an Avengers movie, but each character is going to have their own movie, and you're yeah. going to have to watch each character's movie to get all the Easter eggs that are in Avengers. That's a movie for me. <laughs> That's the type of shit I fucking get into. <laughs> and then they, they changed the focus, mm-hmm. and now we're 17 movies in, but they never told anyone they changed the focus, yeah. and they don't make them for me anymore. Mm-hmm. They make them for the dad that wants to... Yeah. Have a Captain America tank top on while he grills burgers. Yeah, and I like that dad also. That's a great. That's a great dad. <laughs> He's doing a great job. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that dad. There's yeah. nothing wrong with liking anything. I don't want to tell anyone you can't like Captain it, America because you're not like me and I like yeah. Captain America. But it's but it's also it's also led to movies not being made for you anymore. And I think it's it, yeah. I, it's it's okay to mourn the loss of those movies. Yeah, yeah. Like I miss. I don't miss the earlier Batman films. I think Nolan's films are way superior to Burton's. To Burton's, I don't well because Burton's are Burton movies that have Batman in them. They're not Batman movies. Apples and oranges, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but like I don't like I have only ever seen The Crow, which is one of my favorite movies ever, mm-hmm. and mostly because I think Brandon Lee is completely captivating. He's incredible from start to finish. Yeah, and I adore that movie. I've never seen any of the follow-ups to it. They're supposedly remaking it. 
I probably won't watch that remake. I don't want to. <laughs> but, like, if people... Pretty bold. You sure you want to say that? <laughs> yes. A lot of people listen to this show. <laughs> but, if pe- but if people, like... It, you know, if people get into that remake or whatever and, and really love that character, I want to think that my response will be, well, you should read Obar's book. It's really, like, it's dark and horrible, but it's got a lot to say. Or go watch the Brandon Lee version. It's pretty good. But I know that a part of me, like you say, Kurt, is going to be like... Damn it, man! I liked that thing before it was cool. Yeah. Like, come on! Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it was good before. You're just late to the party. And I, I don't know. That's that's just part of being human to a certain degree. Is that you get a little resentful. You get a little bit of like a out of the corner of your eye look at somebody when they say they like something that you already liked before. Mm-hmm. You know, as though they discovered it. And you're like, come on. yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. I, except I yeah, I don't give a shit about Game of Thrones. But I feel I feel for people that really loved those stories before yeah. it turned into a HBO it's like jerk a, off. It's like a different weird thing. Well and then now. there's another layer to that because I am I have not read Game of Thrones, but I adore Martin's sci fi short story collection. He's an incredible writer. Sand Kings is one of the greatest short stories ever. Hmm. And so when uh People were up about the show, and then people read the books for pissed because, you know. Yeah. And then my sister who'd read the books was, like, getting mad, and I'm like, you didn't even read George R. R. Martin's early works. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the real fan here. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm not actually upset with her about it at all. Mm-hmm. But it's like, there's so many ways you can just keep going back, and you can keep having that argument. It's a never-ending downward spiral yeah. that you can get into if you want. So avoid yeah. the argument, I guess, is my overall <laughs> yeah, point. Like, have a discussion and disagree but don't right. turn it into who's better. You you don't need to stake your whole identity on what things you no. like. Right. It's, and it's been a long road for me to get there also. <laughs> well, it's a long road yeah. for everybody. We all stake our identity on what we like yeah. when you're younger. And some people are able to move past that and some people are not. And I see this as a high school teacher where I am attempting to help students understand that there is a broader way of interpreting things. And one of the things I always say is just because something is different does not mean it's bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you have a school like we do where there's students from all over the world in classes and they do things very differently because of their culture, telling other students, listen, just because they do this this way does not mean they're wrong. It just means that it's different. That's okay. That's a really hard thing to come to grips with, whether you're a kid or an adult. Yeah. Stranger Things Season 5. <laughs> Right. Going to Africa. Stranger <laughs> Things season five. That opens up a whole other bag. <laughs> so, yeah, Stranger Things season five is basically just a Heart of Darkness adaptation. <laughs> Fucking Chief Hopper is the main guy, and uh, Mike is the guy who's gone native. As uh huh, uh huh. Yep. I'm writing these down. Stranger this is things. good. This is good. Stranger, you're not even pretending. To this write. is why we. <laughs> this is why we workshop. <laughs> you're, waving, you're waving two hey, soda hey, cans around. Ball, no bad ideas. Yeah. No bad ideas. <laughs> It's a Stranger, safe space. No one Stranger ever hears things. anything outside this room. Season, season six, all right, is the American Revolution. It's the time uh-huh. of the American Revolution. They're all traveling. They live out in the outskirts, right? I will say... Coon I, skin caps. Yes. Skin caps. I will say Davey, that... Davy Crockett. Anytime a franchise runs out of ideas... The American Revolution version is like my. Oh, all right, cool. I'll check that out. Like, I'm so you played that. Assassin's Creed Three or whatever it was. So when Tremors fucking Seven comes out, and yeah. they're, they're all wearing tricorn hats. Yeah, the we've got to throw these the worms, worms into them. I'll you be see, there. You went to. You I went to. <laughs> you went to who's he doing it? You went to the the British are coming. I went yeah. to the Boston. I went tea to Paul party. Revere. You went to Boston Tea Party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll yeah. be, <laughs> I, was, I, was I will watch say, the shit out of I'll that. I'll be in the movie seat, but those those movies don't come to no, theater anymore. No, that one uh, will be released as a Netflix miniseries. Not for a long time. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Not for a long time. Literally only the first one is the one that was in theaters. The rest of them have been direct-to-home video. Mm-hmm. So anyway, anyway. Do, do we have any final thoughts about Stranger Things? This has been a lot less, uh, a lot less violent. Well, than... I don't, th- I don't think we have such strong feelings about Stranger Things. Yeah, no. I, it's yeah. fine. I, I like Trevor. I, you really like it. Uh, yeah, I like it. I, I, but I'm not like a rabid fan about it. You don't yeah. think that it's like that's not one of my would, my touch points. Would you call it essential? No. Yeah. No. I don't think any of us would call but it. But I would essential. recommend it to a lot of different people for sure. Yeah. You know, you I think, would enjoy yeah. this. If you want to watch that, if you're looking for something to watch on Netflix, if yeah. that is your scope, I, like. I wouldn't put it in the category of what I consider good bad TV, which is like Gotham. Mm-hmm. Gotham is a bad show. Hey, you, do you like good bad TV? Have you ever checked out Haven? 
No. Holy smokes, check out Haven. Okay. Do you like Stephen King? It's, that's the Stephen King TV show, right? Yeah, I wanted of. to see it, yeah. yeah like, it's inspired by some of his stuff? Inspired by just the general vibe of Stephen King. Okay. Try Haven. Okay. <laughs> did you know that one of the guys writing for that, I'm pretty sure, is the guy that did the Fat Man on Batman podcast with Kevin Smith? I did not know uh, that. What's his name? I can't think of his name. Mark something. Yeah. I don't know. He was a critic in LA, but now I think, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Gotham is good, bad TV, mm-hmm. because... Holy crap, everyone in Gotham has died. Like, thousands of people have died in episodes of that show, and mm-hmm. yet nothing ever changes. <laughs> but there's some good acting. Like, the guy playing Penguin is really, really excellent. Yeah. And the young version of Selena Kyle is really good. And there's some other stuff in there. Yes. Oh, my um, God, she is really she's good. She's great. And Harvey, as the Harvey Bullock, that actor, he's, like, the show should be about him. Like, mm-hmm. screw Gordon, because that Gordon character doesn't make any of that. <laughs> Uh, but like that's that's a good bad show. Riverdale is a good bad show. Riverdale's pretty good. Like that's yep. that's an absurdly Kurt ridiculous tried Riverdale. Show. I couldn't do Riverdale. Couldn't do it. Well, it's like it's overblown soap opera. Like yeah. Yeah, my wife's gonna kill me for saying this. Uh, One Tree Hill is just a bad show <laughs> that my wife adores. So I'm yeah. sorry, Trevor's but, wife. We know you're listening. We're Molly, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, love you. Uh, but that, like that. You know, there's some shows that are just bad. There are some shows that are bad but still entertaining and good. And like, I think Riverdale falls in that category because, and like, she's also a big fan of uh, How to Get Away with Murder. That's in that category too. It is patently absurd. It makes no sense if you hold it up to scrutiny for mm-hmm. 0.2 seconds. Mm-hmm. But it's fun, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And I think Stranger Things is just a notch above something like that. It makes a little more sense. It works a little better as it, within its own rules. And it's slightly better than some of those other shows. I don't think it's quite as bad in an almost campy way like Gotham is. Mm-hmm. I think it might be. I might prefer it if it was bad in a campy way. Well, and some people might. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Have either of you seen the Evil Dead series? No, I haven't. But uh, so it's a on friend Netflix of mine was now. Recommending it to me the other well, day. Well, so I saw some clips from it, and like, I don't know that I am going. To, I know Sam Raimi did it with. Um, oh my God, blank on his name. Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. So like, I might enjoy it. Like I enjoyed the films, but. I saw some clips and I'm just like, I, this feels like they're really trying too hard to be campy. Mm-hmm. And that crests very quickly and turns into just bad at some yeah. point. So I just, my feeling on Stranger Things is it's perfectly good. It is, it is right there above that good, bad category. Yeah. And I would recommend it to people. Most people that I, you know, would have interest that I think it would feed into. So yeah. I, I think that Stranger Things marked the widespread cultural acceptance of binge watching as a valid way of consuming art. And, and I think that we need to cut that shit out fast. We need to cut that shit out sooner rather than later. Yeah. Because it's gonna, it's hurting, it's gonna hurt culture, and it actually kills you faster. Like, it actually makes you die and makes you unable to walk. Like, they've done studies of this. If you spend a long time sitting around... You, it's yeah. It turns out, it turns out walking is a is a you, you, essential to life. Yeah, yeah. You you signing up for what if you didn't need to walk? <laughs> yeah. Time out. That's all I'm saying. We just there's no there's I've no seen going Wally. back. Just change the paradigm. We just, yeah. Wally yeah. is a great is a great case study of that. We just shift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that uh, I think that in 50 years we'll. Either we'll look back and not be able to see anything because Stranger Things will have begun the process that ultimately obliterates our ability to look uh, candidly and, and lucidly at our own culture. Or, or we'll, physically turn our heads. Or, yeah, <laughs> Stranger Things will have, have taken our ability to move our necks. Or we're no. going to be a bunch of fucking Nolan Batmans with our with our cowls. And I, wonder, go, hey, I wonder, though. Pray to me. Uh, that was offensive, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very upset by that. Um... You know, I, I don't want to just. I don't want to write off maybe the binging aspect, but I think there's so, there's something to be said about taking a long time to tell a story. I think in the ninety years that we've been making movies, I don't think every movie needs to be ninety minutes long anymore. Like, I I think that maybe we should make it so you don't. I don't know how you could if you give people the ability to binge watch something, they're just going to binge watch it. Well, but, I mean, some people. I mean, some people won't. Like, I. Yeah. I watched Stranger Things season two over the course of like two weeks. Yeah, but that, I, I mean, I don't have time to binge watch things. Yeah, and mean, I think but... that I, I'm not necessarily as concerned about that part because I think that people who actually want to take the time to enjoy watching something will do it. Like, and then people who are most people I like to think who are binging are putting it on in the background. You know, like when Gotham's on Netflix, that's how I'm seeing anything related to Gotham. I yeah. couldn't tell you what happens in five episodes, but I see 
maybe a third of what's actually on the screen because I'm doing something else. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just think that uh, there's there's stuff to be said about the the is this a TV show or a movie? Should you how much should you watch in one sitting? I don't think we have to. Are you guys fans of the Lord of the Rings extended versions? Yeah, I like, like those. I think the extended versions much better than the original films, which are still very good. But you watch them as six separate movies, not as, or six episodes, not as three four-hour movies. Mm-hmm. Which I have done, and it's not awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so many people that told me that, like, oh, I've watched the entire extended versions all the way through, and I was like, why did you do that to yourself? That seems like a terrible way to live your life. <laughs> it's only like 13 hours. <laughs> <that bad. laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think about that kind of stuff, because, like, with especially the marketability of movies, where Netflix obviously doesn't have that problem. Mm. You might not think that they're great movies, but I mean, when Zack Snyder hands in a superhero movie, it's three hours long, and then studios say, we want to cut about half of this out. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that should always be the answer. I don't think that, because should a movie's length or a TV show's length be just, well, if we have it this long, we can show it this many times in a day. I think that's the wrong approach to... I think that the 90-minute thing is kind of arbitrary. I'm opposed I to cutting movies in general. Don't. I kind of disagree. I think that movies have a length that they should be, and movies generally shouldn't be more than two hours long, and most movies should probably be about 90 minutes. Why? Is I, it, think if you're, I think if you're going too far outside of that zone, then you're, you're, uh, you're diluting what your movie is saying. Why should it be different than a book, though? Because movies are different from books. But I mean, if we're telling stories, shouldn't maybe they're different because they can't be as complicated as a book? Maybe if they were longer and possibly broken into episodic chunks like chapters. Well, the, the difference—the difference with a book is that um, when you're reading a book, you can flip back to earlier parts and look back at things that you might have missed and revisit earlier scenes much more easily. It's the Watchmen thing. It's right. It's why Watchmen could never really be a, a great movie the ver- the movie version of that story can never be as good as the book because the book is able to layer in so much more symbolism and and, and various themes that was a stupid way to say that but for whatever. the record i think watchman's a great movie but Disagree. yeah yeah me too uh, <laughs> but the, there there are certain structural reasons why the movie version can just never be as good even if even if it is a good movie well, it's, it's the case to be made for why certain books should be serious instead of films like but, some some books work very well as films like silence of the lambs is a good film mm-hmm. that is a good version of that book it's maybe even better than the book arguably yeah. the, the television series hannibal is right. the absolute best version of those stories as far as i'm concerned right because they're those are you know sometimes a writer writes something and it's just because that's the medium they have available to them yeah. it's not necessarily because that's the best place for that story I think that Hannibal works a lot better it, it depends on show. how you're adapting what you're adapting and the quality of what you're adapting in a lot of ways but I mean mm-hmm. there are a lot of I'm just somebody who likes longer movies I think but then I would be interested I'd have to go back and look at like what long movies were actually like made it like we're good we're well received or was it just that i saw the ones that were well received and i missed all these other ones that weren't as good like and zodiac's a long movie i adore that movie I, I like some long movies as well like some of those old russian science fiction movies that are just like three hours mm-hmm. of lingering shots of trees and stuff that feels like it's actually earned it's actually doing something with the time in which it takes but it's not it's not long so that it can tell a much more complicated story. It's long so that it can fit more imagery in, and it can fit. Is that in... the same reason Tarantino works? It's the same reason Tarantino works. Yeah. It's because it, Tarantino's stories are not necessarily that serpentine and no. and windy. Two different ways of saying the same thing. I didn't need both of those words. <laughs> uh, Tarantino's movies are not necessarily that complicated at a plot level, but the the way that he unfolds the story in front of you is so compelling and it really does warrant the amount of time that it takes. So I I, I guess the way I would uh, I would revise my earlier statement is that if you're going to go past the 2 hour mark, you better justify it. If you're going to go past the 2 hour mark, you need to have a very good reason. And your reason can't your reason shouldn't just be, well, my wonderful story is just so long. <laughs> right. I have to include this this and this. Yeah, it's like why? well maybe if you, you can't don't. answer why then you don't yeah. And, and that requires a good studio exec or somebody overseeing it to actually be able to yep. figure those things a, a out. A good producer yeah. and a good editor. And and that's 
Yeah. I, even at the script level, you want to have a good editor as well to say, yeah. like, well, do we really need this? Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with, like, because, you know, Amazon's going to make the Lord of the Rings TV series. We'll and see I'll, how that goes. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's relatively new development, but, like, it'd be interesting. The number one thing they should not do is they should not try to remake Lord of the Rings, like, the films. That, no. that apex is there. You're not going to top, unless you think you can top that, and I'm going to tell you right now, you can't top that. I think they need to go a completely different direction yeah. with it. Because there's, there, Lord of the Rings is one of those texts that's complex enough that you could make three or four different great interpretations yeah. of those books. Or you could just go get any of the other stuff that's come out from, like, things Christopher Tolkien put together from his, mm. you know, father's work and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, you could do Huron and you could do some of those other ones and set them in that world and that would work fine. Well, the, the Lord of the Rings movies as they came out, we are well off the reservation right now. But... Yeah, we're pretty much going to, we got to wrap it up pretty soon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're at two uh, hours. The Lord of the Rings movies that came out are the Lord of the Rings movies that you would expect Peter Jackson to make. Right? Yeah. That's clearly yeah. Peter Jackson and Fran Boyle's interpretation of that book. Yeah. And it focuses very heavily on the good versus evil side of things, and maybe less on the the uh, inherent goodness of simple folk mm-hmm. side of things. I don't know. I think that I think to, there's there's more to be said about Lord of the Rings. To bring us back to the, sort of the stuff we were talking about to begin this, like with Babadook with Stranger Things. What we've really been talking about this whole time, whether we've gone on tangents or not, has been like what actually is good storytelling. Mm-hmm. Which I is the thing that I'm always most fixated on, regardless of what I'm engaging with. And I think that, like, Babadook is very good storytelling. And I think that Stranger Things has the potential, and continues to have potential, to be very good storytelling. And it hasn't figured out how to do that yet. And when we talk about how long things should be, or how short things should be, or what should and shouldn't be included in something... That should ultimately be the question. What is this adding to the story? What is this adding to the things that we want? Not just fan service, which is, I think, the generation we're currently in, Mm -hmm. is the fan service generation. And maybe that's been every generation, and we're just not seeing it. We're seeing it because it's stuff we care about now, more like Marvel movies. Yeah. You know? But I think that the thing that always derails stuff is when we lose sight of, is this adding value to the story? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's get out of here. Thank you for coming on, Trevor. Yes, hey, thanks, thanks for you. having me. Was I was going to mention before that this was like this is the podcast I listen to the most. Yay. That's dope. Thank yeah. you. That's but dope. With the with I will give one exception. I listen to the Penny Arcade stuff all the time That's too. Fine. But they also put out six thousand podcasts. They're our greatest competitors. But yeah, it's, seriously, <laughs> I know it's really unfair to me. <laughs> you know, but this really... was like super fanboyism to be on the podcast. Oh, well, thank so, you. I appreciate that. It genuinely, was a pleasure genuinely you mean on. that. We got. We'll have to have you on more. Yes, yeah. more than Jake. Ideally, would be, would be <laughs> the, perfect, the perfect number of times. You know, yeah. I actually think that. Um, there's room in the future to have the four of us on only because it will help. I want to have a representative from every type of position of person that works in a school <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast at once. We'll have my wife come on. She's an art teacher. Mm-hmm. We'll have us all. And we can have from school. And then, and then we can start our own school. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just... a charter school. It's the Ben and Kurt till it learns. <laughs> Hey, uh, do you, are you on social media? How can we find your book if would we you, want Would you to, like uh, to be found? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, my, I, I am on Twitter with at Legacy Chronicle. I sometimes post things there. I'm also on Facebook under Legacy Chronicle. And you can get directly to Amazon to get the books there, but they're on Amazon. Um, if you search the Legacy Chronicle and then either the sword or the shield, they're paired up nicely by Amazon. They were kind enough to do that. You can buy them together. You can buy them separately, Kindle or paperback. And, yeah, I'll be doing a sale probably after the holidays on the Kindle version. So if people are big into Kindles, they can probably, they'll can they be able to get both books for, like, half price. When's that awesome. sale going to happen? I don't have a specific date yet, okay. but it'll be post... It'll be in 2018 because I the way that Amazon works is they give you three months... Uh, periods where you can put things on sale mm-hmm. and then you can't do it again. And I'd already done one before Rhode Island, so I have to wait until January uh, to do the next one. Okay, yeah, because this episode isn't going to go up till probably midway through January 2018. Yeah. That's perfect. I'll so wait until after that. Yeah. The sale will be after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cut you off at the knees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate to bring it to you, but you, uh, your sale already happened. <laughs> yeah. You done got fucked. That so. sale happened 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going in the vault. I was going to say, uh, the public doesn't know about our plan to start burying the that's on next week's episode. <laughs> Which actually to, came out several weeks ago. Several weeks ago. And there'll be fan the service of it in Stranger Things you, Season 5, right. 1973. They dig up a time capsule yep. that is uh-huh. actually teleported I'm back. I'm so excited to write this fan fiction. But it doesn't... 
Uh, it hasn't happened yet because, as you don't know, Trevor, <laughs> we don't put them out anymore. We bury them in the basement so our children, Jen and Bert, can continue. No, no, no. I was listening to this podcast <laughs> on my way here today, and I turned it off before I got in your house because I was ashamed to come into the house listening to the podcast I was about to be on. That's a real thing that happened. Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, We've got plans. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have a uh, B and C till it H T-shirts. <laughs> I'd buy that. Just uh, we're gonna just gonna like iron on pictures of our faces. I'll be represented by a cartoon B. You'll be represented by the the horizon of the sea. Uh huh. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you want to listen to more B and C till it H or Black Gold podcast. You can subscribe to Black Gold Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. You can also stream it from YouTube and Buzzsprout. If you're a listener to the show, please give us a rating and drop us a review on iTunes. It helps the show a lot, and we really appreciate it. Thank you again, Trevor. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KurtCake5K. You can follow Ben and Kurt Till It Hurts on Twitter. Yeah, I think that's it, right? That's that Ben and Kurt. I'm gonna start tweeting more. We're gonna. That's okay. It's a, you know, it's a slow start. I'm gonna do another. Uh, I'm gonna do another excellent outro to pair up with our excellent oh, intro. Yeah, <laughs> so important. See you next time, guys. Bye, everybody. Desecrate those like buttons. <laughs> yeah. Share us on Reddit. Yeah. They're too judgmental. I don't want to be on Reddit. Put us on 4chan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> way better when you dance. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> it looks like it's gonna work pretty good. Yeah, that's working. That's, that's what yeah. that's what good sounds look like, right? <laughs>